Let's do a short overview of the DMIC framework that we will use in this course. Later on, we will go into more details on each and every stage of this framework. Just as a reminder, the mic is one of the two most often used frameworks methodologies of Six Sigma, and we use it to improve existing processes. Now, the mic name comes from the first letters of the five stages that this framework suggests going through. So the B stands for define. This is where we define what we actually want to do. M stands for measure, A for analyze. Here we try to discover the root cause of the problem. And in the next stage, so improvement stage, we try to improve it. And finally, C stands for control. Let's see how those stages actually look like. So as we have mentioned in the define stage, we try to define what is actually the problem we are trying to solve, what is the current situation that we want to improve. Quite often this requires defining process and also the customers. Remember, as we have said that you have internal and external customers. In the define stage, you obviously have to make sure that you look from the perspective of the customer. So whatever you do, especially that the aim is to make the customer more happy. In the define stage, you also have to define, pick the, the process that you want to improve. And within this process, you obviously have many KPIs. So you also have to decide which KPI of this process you want to improve. Finally, in this stage, I would also suggest to try guess what could be the root cause of the problem. This will be especially important once you want to gather data. Some consultants suggest to do that in an analyze phase. However, given that before that you have to measure, I would say that this is a bit too late. So try to guess what could be the root cause of the problem you're trying to solve in the defined stage. Measure is about obviously gathering data. So you observe the actual performance of the process. In other words, you measure what is the rate of the defects and you also should measure other things, other KPIs metrics that seem to be linked to the performance of the process you're improving. And this will be coming from your guesses. Obviously, you also have to, in many situations, you have to check whether you have sufficient historical data. And if not, you may be forced to collect them additionally to see whether something is impacting the problem you're trying to solve or not. In the analyze stage, you formulate a hypothesis, or rather you confirm the things you have defined in the defined stage. And here you obviously using data that you have gathered in the measure phase, you try to see whether a certain thing is impacting the performance of the process or not. As a result of this stage, you should have a list of root causes confirmed by the data. In the improved stage, once you know what is the root cause behind the problem you're trying to solve, you obviously try to find solutions. So you start by identifying potential solutions that may help improve the situation. Not all of them will work, so you should test them, analyze results of the test. And once you see that uh, they are solving the problem, removing the root cause of the problem, then you can decide what you implement and where. Finally, you've got the control stage. Here you have two things you want to do. First of all, you want to create such a situation that the process will remain delivering a high quality product, but also you want to have some sort of a controlling system that will help you check whether the process is performing according to the new requirements. Now, let's have a look at an example that will show you how this may be done in practice. We'll discuss this example in more details later on, but here we will do just a short summary of the potential problem that we want to solve, obviously using the DMIC framework. So let's have a look at a short example of a restaurant chain who wants to improve the process of customer service using the DMIC framework. In the first stage, we obviously have to define the problem. And here we have defined that the customer is complaining about the long waiting time for the food that he has ordered. In other words, long service time. This is a source of bad reviews on demand markets. And due to that, we lose a lot of money. So this is what we obviously want to improve. We want to reduce the waiting time. Now in measure, we have defined where we gather the data for how long and what kind of data. So first of all, we gather for seven days in five restaurants and we measured speed of service. So the service time and things that might be influencing that. So number of meals per one employee, level of experience of employees and similar variables. Now in analyze phase, we would have to define the hypothesis or if we did it in the defined phase, just uh, confirm whether we want to analyze 
summarize them given the data we've got. And here we've got two hypotheses. So the first one was that the long service time is due to the big number of meals per one employee. And the other was that it was rather due to the low experience of our employee. Let's assume that we've analyzed gathered data. And out of that, we got that the high long service time is mainly due to the level of experience. Once we know what is the reason for our problem, we can obviously somehow address that. And this is what we try to do in the improve stage. We first list three potential solutions. So we can increase the wages by 10% to decrease the turnover. So keep experienced people. The other thing we can do is devote five hours to additional training per week and then create contests with rewards. Let's assume that we have tested every idea for three months on 10 different restaurants. And out of that, we have discovered that actually the idea too, so additional training was the best one. If this was the case, we would have to implement this in the whole chain. And finally, we would have the control stage. So here we would have to first of all, start measuring service time in automatic way. So for example, using our MRP system. On top of that, it would be great to check customers' reviews on a weekly basis and see how they are trending. And finally, Finally, to prevent a situation where the service time is long, we can link the bonuses to the service time and the average review for a specific restaurant. We can also measure the experience level of employees for every restaurant on a monthly basis and treat this as a leading indicator of the service time and the average review because we have in the analysis phase established the link between the level of experience and the service time. So if the level of experience is going down, then the service time is going up and the review are going down. So if we control ahead of time the level of experience, we can control the end results or so the reviews, which obviously impact the top line of the business. So that's in short how we would summarize the demand being applied for this specific case study. As you will see, we'll go into details during the course and see how we can come up with those sort of conclusions that we have summarized here.